Hello and welcome to Spokane County Spotlight. I'm Commissioner Al French and my guests today are Kevin Ritchie, Mayor for the City of Airway Heights and Albert Tripp, Administrator for the City of Airway Heights. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. Today, you might have noticed that we have a different setup uh, in the Spokane County Spotlight. It's in an effort to follow social distancing guidelines. Uh, we have arranged our light layout. Our focus today is about the City of Airway Heights. So I'm excited to have Mayor Ritchie and Albert here to visit with us. Before we get started, Kevin, for the benefit of our audience, uh, could you give us a little bit about your background? Absolutely. Uh, well, I, I grew up in, in Walla Walla and, and uh, uh, joined the Air Force back in the mid-90s. Uh, after I got out of the Air Force, I, I, I found my way up here to Spokane. Uh, I, was, I was hired by the uh, Spokane County Sheriff's Office, where I've worked for the last little over 17 years now. Um, I've, I've spent time in patrol. I've, I've spent time as an investigator with major crimes and, and crime, or, uh, the special, special assault unit. I'm sorry. Uh, currently, I'm a um, uh, supervisor for, the, uh, uh, for patrol. Um, I was elected to the Airway Heights City Council about 12, a little over 12 years ago. Um, I served as the deputy mayor for a couple years before I was uh, appointed to be the mayor. Uh, I've been serving as the mayor now for uh, a little over four years. Um, uh, I have a uh, my wonderful wife, Valerie, uh, four kids, uh, two grandkids, um, and we are uh, just happy to be here and talk. Very good. Well, thank you for your service, not only to the city of Airway Heights, but to Spokane County at large because of your uh, position on the sheriff's uh, uh, as one of our deputies, so thank, thank, you. You. thank you. So, uh, Albert, uh, give us a little bit of background about you. Certainly. Um, so, about 17 years ago, I, I became a transplant to this area. Um, I have um, done a little bit of everything in the sense of I've, I've previously worked with the City of Spokane, uh, Lincoln County Sheriff's Department. Um, my wife and I, we've had um, two small businesses um, during the 17 year time frame within the Spokane area. But like a lot of people, you know, once I was introduced to the area, I fell in love with the quality of life and the environment and uh, love what I'm doing. Terrific. So, you know, now most of the people watching the show are going to be uh, familiar with Airway Heights, but we do have uh, new visitors and stuff to not only the region, but the show. So give us a little bit of overview about Airway Heights. Sure. Uh, Airway Heights is a, a population of about 9,500. Uh, it's located on Highway 2, just to the, the west of Spokane. Uh, it's it's the fastest growing city in Spokane County right now, I believe, and um, it's a it's a great place to raise a family. It's a, a full service city where you can do anything, almost anything you want there, uh, with a real short uh, ten minute commute to downtown Spokane. Terrific. So uh, I know that's a great place to raise a family and and stuff, and you've got a lot of amenities that are family oriented and stuff. So. But you're also attracting a lot of businesses. Tell us a little bit about the, uh, the business opportunities in Airway Heights. I'll, I'll let Albert talk about that a little bit. Sure. Okay. sure. Airway Heights is a great place to do business. Um, businesses, um, so the city provides a, a great opportunity with an abundance of land that's close to um, air, rail, and freeway access for anyone looking to do business. So uh, in terms of location, it's ideal from that perspective as well. Business also enjoy a low cost of uh, operating within the city of Railway Heights and, um, and, and, the, and have access to you know, the talent pool within the metro area. So uh, I know from a historical standpoint, Airway Heights has a little bit uh, been challenged by access to water and stuff. What are some of the things that you're doing to address that issue? Well, Airway Heights, is, we've always had a unique situation when it came with, to water, uh, but Ever since the uh, contamination from a few years back, we've been we've been working with our federal and state and local partners, trying to develop uh, uh, solutions for a long-term water source to replace it. Uh, currently, we we purchase water from the city of Spokane, so mm -hmm. it's 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 all clean and and uh, and and we're at we're at a good capacity right now, and, and things are going well. But we're uh, we're looking to the future, and we're looking to solve the long-term issues. So. Terrific, terrific. So I, I know that uh, uh, Fairchild has been a partner uh, with you. They're obviously uh, a, a good neighbor to the city of Airway Heights and stuff. So Absolutely. Uh, uh, you get to enjoy that relationship. And again, for those in the audience, Fairchild is the largest 
a single site employer in Spokane County and it is uh, rapidly becoming the largest air refueling base in the country. So uh, we're very uh, blessed to have them not only in Spokane County, but Airway Heights. So, um, so tell us a little bit about some of the projects that are going on in Airway Heights. Uh, well, Albert, did you want to touch on some of these? Sure, sure, happy to do so. So we've got um, several projects uh, occurring um, as we speak, and the vast majority of them are designed to support growth. So you know, we're trying to proactively plan for things like housing, um, schools, utilities and transportation. Um, so on the standpoint, from the standpoint of housing, you know, we recognize that housing availability in the state of Washington, <coughs> Spokane County and Airway Heights, it's at an all time low. And so we're actively pursuing an expansion of our urban growth area to um, provide additional land to construct more housing. Um, you know, we see about 95% of the, the workforce that uh, works on the West Plains commute on a daily basis and, and that's due to an absence of access to housing and so we'd like to expand at UGA um, to be able to construct additional housing uh, to allow mm -hmm. folks to work closer to their employment and reduce their amount of time spent and the commute time. Uh, we're also working with the local school district, Cheney School District. They've been a great partner and we're collaborating with them on additional school facilities. The district recently completed an upgrade to uh, Sunset Elementary uh, which is great and we we continue to work with the district on additional school facilities because as we're seeing this increase in population with that also comes um, school-aged families who have an increased need for additional facilities and so the district just recently closed on a piece of property that will provide a neighborhood school and we continue our work with the district on um, middle school and high school opportunities because those facilities those are key to every community they're essential and so we'd like to see um, that move forward and we're partnering with the district to be able to do so. And then as recently as February of this year, we learned that the uh, Department of Defense will now use access to um, education, school facilities, as a criteria for when they're making basing decisions. And so as you mentioned earlier, Fairchild is key to the region, is key to the city. And that's something we, we don't want to jeopardize, put at risk. And to that end, you know, if we make investments now, if we plan now for school facilities, um, not only the population growth we're seeing, but uh, with regards to Air Fairchild Air Force Base, it will help ensure additional missions will have the ability to be able to come and locate there as well. Um, some of the other projects we're working on, in addition to the water supply, is on the transportation. And so we've got a broad coalition that includes uh, the West Plains Public Development Authority, uh, City of Spokane, uh, the uh, Spokane Regional Transportation Council, and DOT in which we're looking at providing um, additional transportation facilities for the West Plains. Most people know that US-2 is the only east-west roadway that goes through Airway Heights and we see this as a key opportunity to really get ahead of where a lot of communities are, make some smart investments on where we locate housing, where we locate schools, and then provide the infrastructure to allow people to work closer to where, where the employment is actually occurring. Well, and you, you talked a little bit about, um, you know, the uh, expansion uh, potential for Airway Heights. And, and you would uh, think as a just a resident of Spokane County, well, that's unique to Airway Heights. But it actually is critical to the entire region because as, uh, as the opportunity for housing around Airway Heights increases, as you indicated, more people can live out in the West Plains, uh, live in Airway Heights, and uh, that takes demand off of I-90, which we all use. And uh, as more people have to use I-90 to get to and from work, it becomes more congested. But if we can expand the boundary for Airway Heights, get people to be able to live there, and, and uh, everybody knows the amount of growth that's coming to the West Plains. And uh, with Amazon, I think, opening up in a matter of a couple of weeks, and there's 3,000 jobs and then other industries that are coming to the area, uh, the need for housing is, is significant. And uh, that means you've got to be able to grow as a community and accommodate that housing. So uh, it, it's, it's not just an Airway Heights issue, it's a regional issue and we need to be very invested into your success as a, as a community and stuff. So, uh, so uh, what are some of the other changes that you've seen as you've uh, spent time living in Airway Heights? Well, just it's we talk about growth and, and housing and, and population. Uh, just in the time I've served on the council in the last 12 years, we've seen a 60% increase in population. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know that's that's significant for any for any area. Um, I believe we average about 9% uh, per year uh, growth, and I think the county averages about 1% a year growth. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're 
we're uh, we're in desperate need of well, we're in desperate need of housing, and so the uh, UGA expansion is a big a big thing. So I, w one of our biggest the biggest things we face and the biggest opportunities we face is growth. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, the, the the whole region is growing at a, a historical pace. I mean, just, you're you're right. For a long time, the county grew at about one percent, and until the last three years, we're now growing at two percent annual rate. And and the uh, the largest part of that is in migration. That's people that are leaving California, Oregon, other parts of the country, and coming to Spokane and Airway Heights because it's uh, not only a great place to live, but uh, great employment opportunities now and stuff. So uh, why don't we talk a little bit about some of the current development projects that are going on in Airway Heights? Sure. So we, we have a variety of different um, development projects currently occurring. You know, a lot on the residential front, I would say the vast majority, if not all, um, in terms of single family, multifamily, those are all designed to accommodate um, the residential growth that we're seeing. So. Um, new single family homes, new multifamily homes, um, town homes, things of that nature, again, to accommodate either an increase in growth occurring um, as a result of the mission at Fairchild Air Force Base or uh, as a result of employment growth occurring um, in along the I-90 corridor or along US-2 as well. And then we have a, a host of um, uh, commercial and industrial projects that are underway. Um, one of the areas in which Airway Heights is investing energy in and resources in is on tracking aerospace development and so we've had um, uh, pretty significant um, uh, aerospace supplier locate within Airway Heights over the past few years, um, exotic metals and they started out with uh, I think a 150,000 square foot facility and then just a year and a half, two years later they're expanding to a, another uh, facility of the same size with plans to grow even further and so we're really excited about that. Uh, we also have other um, industrial projects um, that are occurring as well on like the uh, metals, metals fab, for example, along with uh, a few others that are occurring there. Yeah, so uh, the growth potential in the West Plains has been really significant and accelerated over the last couple of years. I mean, obviously Amazon is the, uh, the, the a big attractor, but when you look out over the last several years, you've got exotic metals, as you mentioned. Uh, uh, Collins Aerospace is under a $145 million expansion of their facility. Uh, we've got uh, Mullen Technologies that's still in the mix, and there's another potentially 13 to 1,500 jobs there. So there's a lot of excitement uh, around the West Plains and things that are that are coming your way and stuff. So you've got to be very excited about uh, what that means. So with that, what are uh, some of the biggest issues uh, that Airway Heights is uh, facing soon? We've already talked about the housing uh, challenge and, and stuff. So what are some of the other issues that uh, you guys are dealing with right now? Well, aside from housing, there's you know the infrastructure and, and water. Um, uh, uh, the, the, the good thing about it's we, we see it as a we don't see it as as much of a challenge as, as opportunity uh, the growth uh, we we still have land that you can build a house on and people can buy a house for two hundred to two hundred fifty thousand dollars so it's still a great place for you know families to come invest in um, we're we're always looking for different ways to ex to help business and and expand the um, the opportunities out there uh, so. Um, do you see any other challenges? Yeah, I would say, you know, as you mentioned, uh, growth, uh, that's, that's going to be the, 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 both the challenge and the opportunity in the sense that, you know, how can that growth occur in a manner that's consistent with the community's uh, vision, values, um, and, you know, what growth is appropriate, uh, something that in terms of what adds value to the community, um, and uh, the growth that is able to fit into the fabric of the community and continue to push it forward. So with the uh, <clears throat> businesses that have already announced that are, uh, are coming to the area, there's a lot of additional capacity that can come to the West Plains. And uh, I think you touched on it, uh, Albert, or maybe it was you, Mayor, about the fact that you've got vacant land. Sure. You know, one of the things that we um, uh, can pride ourselves in is that we are uh, one of the few, if not only, areas in the state of Washington where you have uh, an airport, international airport, plus a freeway, plus rail, all in the same location. I mean, the only mode of transportation we don't have is uh, sea, and if we could build a, a canal to get from here to the Snake River, <laughs> I'd do it just so that we'd get all four of them. But yeah. this is a unique place in, uh, in the state to be able to attract businesses and stuff. So um, 
but there's there's another project, and I think you touched on a little bit more, or a little bit uh, earlier, and let's circle back to that for just a minute. Uh, you guys are aggressively working on uh, with WashDOT to uh, do a bypass uh, around uh, Highway 2 so that you know all of this uh, traffic that comes through the area is not necessarily going through the center of of your town. Why don't you talk a little bit more about that? Sure. Um, so there there there's a bypass on the north side of US-2, it's more a, of a 6-12th alignment. Um, and then there's one on the south side of US-2, uh, which is a 21st Avenue. And we believe both of those are necessary because you know, trans similar to water, transportation is key. Um, and US-2 is, has been experiencing congestion over the last uh, several years. And we're, we're trying to be proactive in the sense of not waiting till that roadway cannot accommodate additional growth, but rather get ahead of it, plan for it, and then build that out to be able to just keep the robust economy we've been experiencing continue to move forward. Another one of our focuses is the uh, is the Highway 2 corridor, and we're developing plans right now to, you know, change the face of that corridor, and so it'll help to uh, route business or route route uh, traffic away from that area and kind of slow it down a little bit and make it more of a downtown feel too. So, so one of the things that you have that I'm extremely envious of is a fantastic recreational facility that you went to the voters with and they supported you overwhelmingly and uh, went through construction and uh, now that uh, facility is open and uh, what a what a class A facility that is. You wanna talk a little bit about that? Absolutely, that's one of our, uh, you know, it's, it's it's a pretty amazing facility actually and our it's a, it's a vision we've had for a long time. It's, um, I believe 10 years ago, maybe even a little longer than that, we uh, went to the voters for a, a project and it wasn't approved. And so we, uh, we went back and regrouped and, and, and got a lot of input from the community of what they really wanted. And uh, we think we, we got that. Um, it, it opened uh, last year, middle of last year. Um, and uh, it's been uh, steadily growing ever since. It's a, it, a lot of people use it. I get comments all the time about how great it is. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm not gonna you know, say it's better than other gyms, but you know, it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, it's, uh, it's been a great, uh, you know, with, with what we're dealing with locally right now, we've had to uh, temporarily close it, uh, but we, uh, we anticipated opening back up and, and uh, thriving. So. Yeah, the thing, I was there when you did the, uh, uh, the opening ceremony and been back there a number of times since then, and, and uh, every time I'm there, the place is packed. Yeah. You know, and the whole cross section of the community, whether it's seniors or, or kids playing in the pool and stuff, it's a very vibrant center and stuff. So, uh, I, I've had congratulations. A hard time. Yeah. I've had a hard time finding a good time to go work out when it's not too busy because, you know, yeah. But that's a good problem to have. So, yeah, but working out at three in the morning, it's not bad. <laughs> I mean, stuff. So, right. right. Well, the it's, other, go ahead. I'm sorry. Albert. I was just going to mention that, you know, it's a great illustration of uh, the partnership the city and the county have had. Uh, in fact, that facility sits on about 70 acres mm -hmm. that the uh, city uh, received from Spokane County, which has been master planned for not only the recreation facility, but also like for sports fields. And so yeah. the, the rec facility along with those initial fields were the first phase of that particular build out of a broader vision that includes more, more recreational opportunities. Yeah. Yeah, so, and I, I was at the board when we, when we did that transaction and stuff, and it was, it was very gratifying not only to do it, and, and it was a great partnership, but the, the way that you've executed on it, I mean, it really is a class, class A facility and stuff, so. When, when the fields are finally built out and there's numerous soccer fields and baseball fields, it's gonna be a pretty, uh, a, a pretty, interesting, pretty, pretty interesting place to come uh, yeah. recreate and, and have some events, so. One of the other things that's unique about Airway Heights is I think you've got a couple casinos up there too. There are, you yeah. want to talk about the relationship you have with the, the two tribes? Uh, well, the Spokane uh, tribe just just opened, uh, it's been a couple years now, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we, we've had a great partnership with them from the beginning. Uh, uh, they've, they've been really good to work with and, and we have continued uh, relationship with them. Uh, the same with the, uh, the Kalispell tribe. Uh, my entire time on the council, I've had nothing but you know good uh, re interactions with with their uh, their council and their, uh, their their leaders out there, and and we continue to develop relationships. And um, we have some potential projects in the future that we're going to do together. Uh, and I think that's going to be a, a key to success moving forward is is uh, bringing the both tribes in and, and working with uh, joint projects with them. Good, good. Yeah. So go ahead, Albert. There's, there's uh, lots of opportunity we see on the horizon. The, um, you know, it's a saying about many hands make light work and 
with the investment both tribes are making in terms of facilities and, and um, various amenities that's being built there is contributing to the overall economic development fiber uh, for the West Plains region. I, I think it'd be, it'd be wrong for us to suggest that we wouldn't be where we're at if it weren't for the tribe. So uh, their investment in the West Plains has been enormous and uh, a great help. So another partnership that we have between uh, Airway Heights and, and Spokane County is uh, uh, our mutual interest in terms of protecting Fairchild Air Force Base and uh, an endeavor that uh, we've partnered with uh, for many, many years now is how do we uh, get uh, the uh, mobile home parks that are located in the APZ or accident potential zone at the end of the runway for Fairchild. How do we uh, relocate those facilities to get them out of that and stuff? So uh, well, that led to uh, a, a partnership with a number of nonprofits and a private sector developer to do, uh, I think, the Highland Village. Uh, why don't you uh, share a little bit about that project, if you don't mind? Sure. Yeah, it's, it's a great project. Um, as you noted, it's designed to um, protect the mission of Fairchild Air Force Base while at the same time providing you know, safe, affordable um, homes for the residents living within the APZ. Um, for viewers that may not be familiar with it, the, the location we're referring to is directly beneath the flight path for Fairchild Air Force Base. and so. Um, we know that that posed a health and safety uh, concern, and so uh, the objective was to look at alternate locations in the community that could be affordable, and through the partnership over the past year, um, in fact, this past legislative session, uh, prior to this last one, we were successful in obtaining, I think, about five and a half million dollars to start building out those units and start putting the utilities in the ground to start that construction, and so we'll actually have units come online uh, this summer that residents that live in the APZ can begin to take advantage of and start to um, to reside in those particular locations. So we're getting close to the end of the show, but there's one other uh, topic that I'd uh, like to have you touch on just a little bit, and that's uh, all of the retail and other service development that's happening on Highway 2. I think you've got like a, a North 40 that's coming into the community, and, and you and the city of Spokane and Airway Heights share that Highway 2 corridor and so, um, uh, want to touch a little bit about that? Sure. The, um, there's, there's, there's a variety of commercial uses that are coming online and along the uh, US-2. You know, um, earlier Mayor Ritchie noted that growth is, the population growth has just been exploding. And so, with that, we've also seen commercial services begin to occur as well. And, and the community, I think, has been really pleased with that in the sense of, it provides an opportunity to have those needs met without having to travel too far. And so um, businesses like North 40, they're coming online. Um, the city has been taking proactive steps and adopting different regulations. So for example, the council adopted an arts plan that looks at the entire corridor, some of the roundabout infrastructure that's going in and um, addresses the issue in terms of how do we change the overall look of, of the corridor itself. Um, and we continue to see as a result of that and activities like that, more and more commercial businesses coming in. So I think it's gonna have a huge return. So in our last couple minutes, um, are there any last messages you'd like to share with the audience? Uh, anything that we haven't touched on that you wanna? Um, just if you, you know, if you haven't yet, come out and explore Airway Heights and, and come look at the housing opportunities and the, uh, the businesses and come, come uh, you know, have, ha eat at some of the restaurants out there. We have, actually have the, some of the best restaurants in Spokane County out in Airway Heights, mm -hmm. in case you didn't know that. But. Um, I, I would just encourage, if you're looking to buy a house, come look out there and, and see what we have to offer, and um, I think you'd be uh, pleasantly surprised. Yeah, when we are out of this stay home, <laughs> stay healthy uh, uh, quarantine opportunity, uh, uh, you're right, there's some great restaurants out in there, we Heights, and I'm the man I am because of it. Uh, so, uh, but uh, certainly encourage people to go out and, and visit some of the restaurants and stuff that we have out there. Well. You know, uh, Kevin and Albert, uh, I've enjoyed the conversation and the discussion, and, and I'm sure our viewers have too, but I'm afraid that we've run out of time. So I'd like to thank my guest, uh, Mayor Ritchie and Albert Tripp from the City of Airway Heights for joining us here on location. Uh, as a reminder of uh, uh, the video for today's spotlight can be accessed on Spokane County homepage and on uh, Spokane County YouTube channel. You can also listen on the go and download our Spokane County Spotlights as a podcast on the SoundCloud 
or iTunes apps. Just go to one of those apps and search for Spokane County. I'm County Commissioner Al French. Thank you for joining us today on Spokane County Spotlight.